Hello. Hi. Um, it was a rainy Sunday afternoon. I was five years old. Uh, I was uh, somehow the adults left me alone in my grandfather's house. I remember picking up a marker and then I drew a car on my grandfather, grandfather's wall. Clearly remember thinking to myself, hey, Royce, that's pretty good. You can draw pretty well and that's a, that's a cool car. Not unlike this one. This one is actually drawn by my daughter uh, at the age of five as well. Um, so that afternoon, after thinking about how well I drew, uh, before the adults realized, I pretty much covered a, half the wall with all the different cars and planes and all kinds of uh, vehicles. That was at that moment that I fell in love with cars, I, uh, or more, than, more like getting obsessed with cars. So uh, all I could think about um, was uh, how cars look, how cars um, car drive, and everything, all my toys were about cars. And this is a passion that um, started at a very young age, and it persisted until today. And because of cars, I started to think about why are cars looking the way it is? Why are we so drawn to it? Why are they so beautiful? It's like a moving sculpture. Um, so I dream about designing my own car, building my own car, especially like a supercar. But uh, growing up in Taiwan, without lack of car industry or car culture, this is a dream that I sort of slowly erase uh, from my, 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 my goals. But because of cars, I got into design. And um, in high school, I got to intern at a company called Proton, where I met a designer named Rene West. And He's a German designer that taught me that design is actually not about how things look or making things pretty, but design is actually a tool to realize a vision that the business has. And this became a very powerful tool that I had, so I went on to, to pursue design. Now, myself, uh, a designer entrepreneur. And my job is to bridge STEM, which is technology, engineering, and art with idea, innovation, dream, emotion, and art, and to create values in the society. I run three companies, um, Panasonic Taiwan, as you know, also iPivo, it's a startup I started uh, 15 years ago. It makes document cameras and uh, interactive education devices that all of them come from design in Taiwan, and also Exchange, an architecture and design firm. And the passion for cars became a hobby. I became a collector, or some people might call me a hoarder. So um, it is still a passion until some, one day in 2011 that uh, that was when Tesla was just getting started. My friend and I, we took our 1967 Lotus and a 1969 Porsche to test drive the then new Tesla Roadster. And that totally changed the way we feel about electric cars. Uh, we think EVs, having driven the, elect the first Tesla throughout the mountains uh, around Palo Alto, while driving uh, as hard as we could, we, see, we could still hear birds chirping in the background. So that experience really made us think that electric vehicles really level a playing field, not in terms of cars performance, but also the whole industry and that we might have a chance in Taiwan to be our own car. In 2013, I was invited to TEDx Taipei uh, to talk about entrepreneurship and design. The speaker after me was this guy, Azizi Tucker. Azizi is a, he calls himself an accidental environmentalist, a car enthusiast, a racer like myself. He uh, was uh, one of the first engineers at Tesla. He helped develop the battery systems in the Tesla Roadster, the Model X, the Model S. And then when he was uh, around that time, around 2012, he was sent to Taiwan to develop the supply chain here to, to all the Taiwan supplier, with all the Taiwan suppliers. 
And uh, he has just left Tesla and was thinking about doing some own, his own project. And obviously, we hit it off and became great friends. And through our common love of cars and disruptive technology, we decided to do something together. We decided to do something uh, nobody has ever done we, to create a company called Zing Mobility. And the first mission was to design, engineer, and build an electric racing car here in Taiwan. This photo was taken at, uh, at Donggang, a famous temple named uh, Donglonggong. And uh, this is uh, when our race car prototype broke down at a racetrack nearby. And we had nothing to do but to call it a day. So I had an idea of having a car towed to the temple to have it blessed for the future. So this is a, a picture I loved a lot. And I think this is um, something that predicts where we're going in the future. So after we met, after we started at TEDx Taipei in 2013, in 2015, we built our first electric race car in Taiwan, and we test, tested the car, the prototype, at uh, then the only race track in Taiwan, the Penbei International Circuit in Pingdong. And this is the first time a Taiwan-made uh, race car, that long electric race car, was tested there. In designing and building the car, we, the most challenging aspect was building a battery system. We realized that batteries are the most difficult component to integrate uh, in an electric vehicle. Because of it being a race car, because of it's the requirements of having uh, fast discharge and charging, at the same time, it has to be light and compact and fit on a, in a race car. Uh, these kind of challenges are not met with off-the-show batteries. And as easy, coming from Tesla, we know that getting the battery cells into modules, into packs, is a very complex and expensive process. And everything hinges on heat. Uh, managing heat is, uh, or thermal management is the most challenging aspect. That's what makes the batteries expensive, dangerous, and heavy. And this is Tesla's uh, patented battery pack. Uh, they, what they do with heat is they run um, they run the pipes, cooling pipes, around the batteries, and they run coolant to take the heat out. And this is the so-called state of the heart. But at the same time, it's very expensive to build, and it also poses a safety risk. For a small company or small team like us, we, don't have, we didn't have the budget to develop our own battery system. And we asked around different suppliers in the world. They were charging us up to two, five, two to $5 million to develop a battery system for us. But I think scarcity um, breeds creativity and innovation. So when we were scratching our heads, we realized that the liquids that we use in our fire extinguisher systems in our race car is actually a liquid called Novak, which is a non-conductive engineering fluid. And from research, we realized that this fluid is used in cooling data center servers. They dip the entire server because it's non-conductive into this fluid. So we had this crazy idea of what if we cool the battery, we immerse the entire battery into this uh, cooling liquid and have it pump through the whole entire battery module and battery pack to take the heat out. Would it be something that's effective in terms of building a thermal management system for a race car battery? So. We actually did it. And uh, that's the battery system. That's the prototype battery system we call Immersio. That's in our race car. And that helped to power a 400 volt electric motor, which gives out about 300 horsepower, and uh, with excellent thermal management. And through further testing, we realized that this, this immersion cool system is up to 10,000 times of heat transfer efficiency. efficiency compared to regular air cool. So you know, your, like your iPhone, it heats up when, you char when you're charging it. Imagine 10,000 of these uh, iPhone batteries giving a high voltage to drive a car or to accept charge. So this is something uh, which is a huge breakthrough in battery systems. But having done that, of course, uh, my co-founder Azizia and I, we put our heads together 
to think about what to do next. And our answer is pretty obvious, is to build another car, but something even crazier. We call it, uh, we call it Miss R, the multimodal electric supercar. Um, I'll show you a quick video just to get a feel of how the car looks and handles. So this is uh, our immersion cooled electro battery module and it sits on the bottom of the car uh, in a carbon fiber enclosure. And the car is built around a carbon fiber tub with uh, aluminum subframes. And the car was like, we tested it, we call it multimodal race car because it's both off-road ready and also you can go on a racetrack. So this entire video we shot during our testing session in Kanding, beautiful part of Taiwan, where we tested it on, on uh, the Hengchun Airport as well as some dirt roads. And uh, it's a car that features four independent electric motors with a battery system. It, it, it can put out around one megawatt of power, which is about 1,341 horsepower. So imagine a car with four engines. So this is uh, something, uh, a crazy dream that we did. And so this is the initial full throttle test that we did at the uh, Dapa Wan racetrack. I'd like to show you. Um, very first test, and I, as you can see now, it's fitted with um, race tires. Pretty undramatic, and we don't, we don't have the sound, but uh, it's actually, you can only get a tire speed. So before you reach the finish line, it's already past 100 kilometers an hour. So 0 to 100, uh, we best time we recorded that day was about 2.3, 2.4 seconds. And the first second was spent with wheel spin. We also tested it uh, with um, two benchmark vehicles. One is the Porsche uh, 911 GT3. This is around the Pan Bay, uh, not the Pan Bay, the Li Bao racetrack in Taizong. And that was my CTO driving the, the, the GT3 and <clears throat> me driving the Miss R. And actually the Porsche couldn't catch up to our, our electric, little electric car. We changed the tires and went to the infield of the track where there's an off-road course. It's a Defender, D, Defender 90 Land Rover. Let's climb up this 45 degree, 100% grade wall. Missouri, the same car, also made it without ease but on the first track. So it's truly a multimodal supercar that uh, we introduced. But more importantly, I think Having these high um, sort of technical requirements allow us to build, develop quite a few different technologies around the car. And also, um, it created a whole new sort of technology and um, products that can be offered to all other vehicles around the world. Our first product, uh, which is just launched, is called the Immersio. Um, it's the first, world's first immersion, fully immersion cooled battery system used to power commercial vehicles and uh, uh, construction, construction vehicles and equipment. With uh, all these features that we talked about, proven in race cars, but at the same time, remember we talked about the fluid coming from uh, fire extinguishers? This is uh, the biggest fear for electric vehicles is when lithium-ion batteries blow up. It's pretty spectacular. So we perform a test that uh, we stick a needle, oops, put a, it's called a penetration test. It's a rigorous test that um, uh, slowly putting a, a metal nail through the battery pack and then causing one of the battery cells to explode. And then we call it thermal runaway. And that heat will also, in a chain reaction, ignite the battery cells around it. As you can imagine, the effect of one battery cell exploding up and then one after the next. It's a chemical reaction that cannot be stopped with water. So it's uh, quite uh, the, the biggest fear for all the vehicle car makers. So on the left, you see a test without the immersion cool liquid running through the battery pack, which is dis disabled. And this is what happens when an electric vehicle blow up. Um, 
But on the right, it's our test with the immersion, our immersion cooling system enabled with the dielectric fluid running through the pack. And as we did the same test with the same nail running through it, um, we had to do it very slow. Um, you can see the effect is very, very different. On the left, we actually had to pay the lab. Uh, we performed this test in about $5,000 in, in damages just to cover the fire damage. So on the right, you see the same test. We just see a little fluid from the pressure release and a little bit of steam. So it, pro it has proven to be the world's first uh, flame suppression thermal runaway uh, protected uh, battery pack in the world. And when we take it apart, we see that the battery would cell with that exploded with the nail panning, it's it blew up, but all the cells around it are still intact. All the, we tested our cells of voltage and the wrappings, are, everything is still intact. <clears throat> so uh, the world's safest battery system is currently getting into production. This is in a, a factory in Taizong, and uh, we're getting ready to, to launch. In fact, this is uh, just yes, pictures from yesterday at the Yokohama Automotive Engineering Expo, where our partners, Japan partner HKS, has display the battery pack with great response to the, to the uh, general public for the first time. And you'll see the battery pack uh, being uh, deployed uh, in different applications in the next 12 months, from a delivery truck in Taiwan to mining equipment in Norway and Australia, construction vehicles in Japan, a Minnesota tractor, uh, more exactly it's uh, snow plows, in Canada and North America, and different energy, renewable energy storage systems in Taiwan and Korea. Um, it's pretty crazy to think about uh, a childhood passion turning into something that actually benefit uh, the rest of the world, the workhorses around the world. So as I look back at the, the, the drawing, I remember when I took my daughter to kindergarten, there was a quote hanging on her kindergarten classroom, a quote by Albert Einstein. It says, play is the highest form of research. And to me, that is actually uh, something that I really believe in, uh, something that I think my journey had, has really taught me and proven that a childhood passion, while well, I was diving headfirst into the passion, I can also, we can also develop systems to power every and any electric vehicle in the world. So uh, I'm very grateful to have this opportunity and given to me with Taiwan's industry and also uh, the advent of electric vehicles and, uh, to realize my passion and a dream. Thank you very much.